Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to speak to you about walking with walking right with the Lord, the Holy One. The title of my message is Walking Right with the Lord, the Holy One. Okay. And uh, I want to uh, actually go along I want to bring some uh, some scriptures. We want to uh, see the life of some of the Bible characters, and we will see what the Lord is speaking to us this morning. Amen? Amen. Uh, first, even shall we have, uh, I'm going to speak to you from Judges chapter 6, verse uh, 12. For the Lord, we are going to look into the life of Gideon. I'm sure mo most of you have heard about Gideon. And uh, Gideon was turned out to be a great man of God. But let us look at Gideon's uh, life here. We, we want to see uh, how God transformed his life from a deeply cowardly man into a great man of God. <clears throat> I'm using the iPad for the first time to, to preach. So if I stumble, I still have a piece of uh, paper with me. So don't worry, okay? <laughs> I'm prepared. <laughs> Let's uh, look at Gideon. Gideon was a Jew, an Israelite. And uh, you know they were the chosen, the Jews and the Israelites were the chosen people of God. Uh, but you know, God gave them the power to drive out all the people of Canaan. The Lord gave Canaan as a possession to the Jews, the Israelites. And they conquered most of the people. But there were some people that did not overcome. They were supposed to have overcome. God insisted, you must wipe out the, uh, the tribes of uh, Canaan. But they let go some people. And one of them was the Midianites. The Midianites were a small group. They begged the Israelites to let them leave. And, uh, the Israelites compromised, they let them leave. Eventually we, we see that the Israelites took advantage and they, they woke in the Israelites. And the Israelites lived in fear. God's people living in fear. And here we see Gideon. Gideon, what was Gideon doing? Gideon was a you know, threshing floor at a wine press. That's very odd, isn't it? Threshing floor at the wine press. Why? Because Gideon was afraid that the Midianites were thieving and robbing them. That he would come, they would come and rob him of the wheat. And he thought at that time probably if I do it at the wine press, they wouldn't know. It because the wine press probably it was not the season for, uh, uh, for uh, uh, season of uh, grapes. So he was hiding and threshing. But the people were crying out to, to God for what the Midianites were doing. And finally God wanted to rescue them. So uh, God picked up, picked upon Gideon. And uh, the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said, The Lord is with you, mighty man of mighty warrior. Some scriptures says mighty man of God. So, uh, what was the, the Lord's purpose in sending uh, the, the angel to say these words to Gideon? Gideon was a very fearful man. He was a bit cowardly. He was uh, afraid that the Midianites would come and attack him and take away whatever he had. What was God's purpose? So God wanted to make Gideon realize who he is. wanted Midianite to know that he is a man belonging to the chosen people of God. A Jew and the Israelites, God's own people. A chosen people. And uh, Gideon was puzzled. How, how can I be a, uh, how can your presence be with me? How can I be a, uh, 
a mighty warrior. Yeah. Oh, people are suffering like that when the Midianites take great advantage over us. And subsequently we see uh, Gideon given some tests and uh, Gideon tests the Lord and truly the Lord proves that he is that. And subsequently we see that uh, Gideon rose up. He got aroused in his spirit. There was a renewal in his spirit and he agreed to do what the Lord wanted to do. And subsequently we see uh, Gideon doing great things, mighty things against the Gideonites. He defeated the Gideonites and he became a, a ruler. He became a judge over the Jews. For 40 over years he was a judge and he did great things and he still was set free during his time of, uh, as a judge. And uh, why do I want to tell you about this now? Because I am talking to you uh, as God's chosen people. As the Jews, as the Israelites were God's chosen people. So are we. We are God's people. And I want to remind you what the Lord wants to do in our lives. Now let's go on. Let's look at the uh, next scripture. 1 Peter 2 verses 9 to 10 How many of you know, of, of us know this scripture? When I come, when I meet you for Bible study or whatever, I'm, I keep repeating this, uh, this scripture. It's a very important scripture. How many of us know this scripture by heart? If anyone knows, I'll give you a treat. <laughs> I will let you take me for lunch. <laughs> Did I say something wrong? <laughs> well, you know, it's a privilege to, to take me for lunch. <laughs> if you want to give me, I'll give you the lunch. Okay? Anybody knows? No? By God. That, there you are. <laughs> that, that is why I want to remind you again what the word of God says. Who you are, what you are, and what is expected of you. But still, can we uh, have the verses? Please. Verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. Once you are not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And now I'm here, I keep repeating this. I know some of you are bored of hearing this. But this is the scripture that we must put into our spirits. I'd like to drive this into your spirit so you can remember, you can realize who you are, what you are. We need to realize our position, our standing as Christians. You're not a simple people. You're a chosen people and picked by the Lord. Am I? Look, no, you're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a holy nation of Christians, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of Him, call you out of darkness into your marvelous light. Once you are not a people, we were, not even, we were not even a people once because we didn't know Christ. But now, now we know Christ. We are, are a people. We are a people. We are a holy nation, a, a chosen people. So it's such wonderful things. This, is, this was what uh, the Lord wanted Gideon to realize. Because God's people often forget who they are. But we must never forget who we are. We are God's chosen people of all the peoples in the world whatever race whatever religion uh, whatever the type black or white blue or black but we are the chosen people amen, amen. amen. God's special people amen? amen the lord is with you 
mighty warrior. The Lord is with you, mighty man and woman of God. We, we, we have to put that in our spirit. And we must realize who we are. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, let's also look in line with this. Let us also look at one or two other scriptures. Let's look at John uh, chapter 8 verse 36. Verse 36. Uh, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So God has set us free. Free from what? What, what does God set us free from? God has set us free from the power of sin and death. God has set us free from sickness, problems. What else? Financial problems. Amen? So if the Son of God set you free, you are free indeed. I, I don't know what is to be free if I am always sick, I am always in financial problem, I am always in relation problem. All sorts of problems. God has set us free. Right? And God has called us to be the king and not the king. In all things, God has set us free and God has set us, called us to be the king and not the king. In whatever we do, wherever we are, that's God, God's purpose. God has called us to be overcomers. See, when God was speaking to uh, Gideon, God was behaving in a cowardly manner, fearful manner. Likewise, God is speaking to us that we should not be fearful, we should not be frightened, we should not uh, let the enemy take control of us, but we should take control of the enemy. We are called to be overcomers. Amen? Amen? To be a people of victory. To be the head and not the tail. Because you are God's people. You are chosen people. Right? Right? Amen. Amen. You want to be amen in so small. Look so few <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. 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 I like to go and shout God, God's glory all over the world. I'm only 50 plus, you know, and I've got a lot of years to go all around. <laughs> 50 plus, okay? <laughs> Young, active, able to move anywhere alone. I go to Romania, I go to Burma, nobody wants to go to Burma twice. But I've been there 20 times already. Huh? Because you must go and shout God's glory everywhere. Amen. Wherever there are people, you must go and tell about the glory of our Lord. That it comes to give life and it comes to give you abundant life. To all the people who do not know Him. And also to some other people who know Him. Because we, we are fearful. We do not know standing. We do, we do not realize who we are. We do not realize that we are a chosen people, a special people, belonging to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. When you say God, God, sometimes the, the word God becomes small. We must realize God is God who created the heavens and the earth. God is God who created the the cosmos, the stars, the sun, the moon, everything is the one who created the galaxies. And you know, our scientists, they still cannot understand, cannot know, they have not specified how many galaxies there are in this universe. That's our God. And we, we belong to Him. He's our God. Such a great and mighty God. And He calls you are his chosen ones. Right? Do we still live in fear? Do, do we still uh, live in poverty? Do we still live in sickness? No. 
I, I don't think uh, that God wants us to be like that. Let's go and see. Let's also look at uh, the next uh, scripture, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. And God raised us, raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. What a great scripture. Right? God raised up Jesus. And God raised us together with Christ Jesus. And seated us together with Him in Christ Jesus. Wonderful is it not? That's indeed a highly exalted position. We are in a highly exalted position. God raised us up together with Christ, uh, Christ Jesus and seated us in the heavenly lands with Christ Jesus. What does Christ do? Christ do. He reigns and rules, right? And when we are seated with Him, we also reign and rule with Christ. We are born to be rulers, not to be ruled. Not to be ruled by the devil, but we are called to be rulers, overcomers, victorious people of God. Okay, let, let's ask them a question. Why then the sicknesses, the problems, and all sorts of troubles we face in our lives? Why? Why then, if we are the holy people, we are the chosen people, you know, raised and seated together with Christ Jesus. Why the sicknesses, the failures, and the problems among God's people? Let's go on and see what, what the scriptures say. We cannot, definitely we cannot uh, deny the fact that there are people, there are Christians, who are sick, who are having financial problems, relationship problems, all sorts of problems. We are called to be overcomers, overcome all these problems. God has given us the power to overcome all these problems. Amen? All the problems that the devil dumps upon us. We are free because Christ paid an absolute ransom for our freedom. Right? Christ paid an absolute ransom, full ransom for our freedom. Freedom from sickness, freedom from poverty, freedom from uh, uh, you know, emotional problems, all sorts of problems. And secondly, even if we are not allowed sin to run right in our lives, have we realized our position? Have we realized our position of sonship with the Lord? We are sons and daughters of the living God. And we are a people given the authority and the power to overcome all evil. Amen? Do you agree? Amen. All of us, all of us, my friends, we are God's chosen people. And God has given the power and the authority to overcome the problems in your lives, sicknesses, financial problems, relationship problems. Yes. God has given us the power. God has given us the power to overcome the enemy. I've given you the power to trample over serpents and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall harm you. We want to talk about Moses. Moses was a friend of God. God loved him. And he was God's greatest servant. Let us look a little bit, a little bit into his life. <coughs> Let's look at Exodus chapter 4, verses 24 to 26. At the lodging place on the way, <coughs> the Lord met Moses and was about to kill him. But Zipporah took a flint knife, cut off her son's foreskin and touch Moses' feet with him. Surely you are a bright room of blood to me, she said. So he, so the Lord let him alone. At that time, 
she said bridegroom of blood referring to circumcision now here was a man uh, who was handpicked chosen by God himself for a great deed to be done you know and God I believe God chose him even from his birth uh, and we, we see God's hand in his life that uh, as a Jew he was growing up in the palace of Pharaoh he was with, with the king of Egypt for 40 years all this time I believe the Lord was preparing him preparing him in power in authority and in knowing about administration the Lord was preparing him but after the 40 years he had to go in time to the sheep you know he was looking after the sheep we, we know Moses was for 40 years in the wilderness and what was Moses doing there prepared to do great and mighty works for the Lord. It was also training. God was also putting him through a humbling experience, learning about gentleness, humility, and so on. And uh, we see that Moses had been, after all this preparation, Moses had been commissioned. He had been commissioned to go and set the people of Israel he was sent to set the Jews free from the slavery of Egypt, from Pharaoh. And Moses was on the way. He was marching on the way with his family to confront Pharaoh. Pharaoh, as we know, was one of the greatest power on earth at that time. He was a great, uh, powerful ruler. And uh, Moses was going demand the release of the Israelites from slavery. And as he was going, the Lord wanted to kill him. This is a very insignificant uh, scripture. A lot of us maybe we read through the scripture and we don't realize what was happening. A great man of God chosen to do a great job and on the way the Lord was going to kill him. Why? Why did God want to do that? We have read the scripture. God, Moses had broken his covenant with God. Let's look at uh, another scripture. Let's go to Genesis 17, verses 9 to 11. This is the Abrahamic covenant, the covenant God established between him and Abraham for the Jews. Then God said to Abraham, As for you, you must keep my covenant. You and your descendants after you, for you, for your generations to come. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you, the covenant you are to keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You are to undergo circumcision. And it will be the sign of the covenant between me and you. For, for the generations to come, every male among you who is eight days must be circumcised. Going back a little back, a uh, little bit on Moses' life. We know that Moses was a Jew, he was an Israelite, and it was the, uh, God's desire. God, it was the Jewish custom for a Jew to marry a Jewess. A woman from their own group. But we know that Moses was married to Zipporah. Zipporah was a Midianite woman. You know, and the daughter of a Midianite priest. And we see that here Moses was marching along with his family, his wife and sons. No one wanted to kill him. You know why? Jesus didn't have his sons circumcised. You know, probably, you know, this woman Zipporah was a Midianite and she wouldn't have agreed to Moses circumcising them, saying probably that's a weird and silly Jewish custom. So probably she didn't agree. And Moses uh, didn't get them circumcised. He let it be to his own right, undoing as we can see. But 
we know, we know that in all things, God's plan never fails. Right? So, Zipporah saved the day. Otherwise, God would have finished off Moses. Why God want to? And the reason why does why did God want to finish off Moses was God didn't want Moses to be disgraced and destroyed. No? He didn't want his plan to fail. So he had to remove Moses from the sea. It's better for Moses to be removed. After all, probably the Lord was going to take him back to heaven. So he wanted to remove Moses from the sea. So that Moses, probably he was doing Moses a favor. He didn't want Moses to be molded, to be disgraced, to be destroyed. So it was good in every situation. And, and we know Lord, uh, that the Lord never allows his plans to be, uh, to fail. Right? Do you agree with me? Am I? Either, uh, either you're going to sleep or you're very hungry. <laughs> Maybe your mind is at the food court <laughs> or some nice place. But the, the last time I, I, we were celebrating my birthday, my son took, took me for a nice dinner and he had prearranged the dinner and he said, that is some nice uh, shark's feet, you know. I said, I gave up eating shark's feet. <laughs> you know, so next time you take me for uh, dinner, no shark's feet. You know what? You, you see the how the wicked things that people do to the sharks in the sea? <laughs> they just haul them, cut out the fins and just chuck them. Thousands and thousands of sharks into the sea. Nothing is a wicked thing. God has given us so many things to enjoy, so much good food to enjoy. Why are you going to eat shark's fin? <laughs> so good about shark's fin. <clears throat> so I said, no more shark's fin for me. So if any one of you want to take me for uh, lunch because, <laughs> because you didn't know the scripture. So you know, you take me first. And no sharks will please. <laughs> so uh Pora saved the day by saving uh, uh, horses. And uh, I want to know uh, I want you all to know that our God is a wonderful God. Who, has, who all the time establishes covenants with his people. Not for his good, it's for our good that all these covenants are established. Amen? Amen. 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 And uh, we know that that God of Abraham, that God of Moses, is always the same God. He's still the same God today. Right? He is immutable. He's unchangeable. The same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And it is that God we worship. No doubt we are under the new covenant. We are God, we are people who have been set free from the, from the power of sin. We, have been, we are people who have been set free from the law. We are no more under, under the law, we are under grace. Nevertheless, nevertheless, do we serve the same God? The God who is holy all the time? God is a holy God all the time. Immutable, unchangeable. And we serve that God. We serve the God of Moses. We serve the God of Abraham. And we are the children of the same God. God is still holy, my friends. And in our dealings, We need to be holy. We need to look into our lives. That's why I said we need to see whether there's any pruning or any, any cleansing to be done in our lives so that we can be able to commune with God and know His plans and His will for us, each one of us. We need to know. We need to be in communion with God. Be able to commune. So when we uh, we cannot commune with God when we don't live a holy life. We do all sorts of things through our mind, through our words, through our actions. 
how are you going to commune with God? How are you going to walk in holy with the Lord? How are we going to know His price for us? So we must set ourselves right, I say. If look into your lives and see whether there's any pruning, any cleansing to be done, so that we can be right with God, so that we can uh, commune with God, so that uh, we can face the enemy boldly. You know the enemy is all the time moving around to see whom he can devour by putting sin and, and his junk into our lives. So these are the things that bring sickness, relationship problems and all sorts of other problems into our lives. Every now and then we got to check our lives and see where we go wrong. Even in our thinking. You know, that, that's why last time when I used here I was talking about the renewal of the mind. Our mind used to be uh, renewed. Our mind should work in tandem with our spirit. And uh, you know, synchronized means that is how our mind, our spirit should work in tandem. Don't let our minds be clouded, be harassed by the works of them, by the thoughts of the devil. The devil always wants to, you know, the the, the devil's biggest background, uh, battleground, I told you, is the mind. That's where the, the devil puts his junk. And uh, sometimes we are taken away from God. We do the wrong things. Not taken away from God. God is still uh, in control of our lives. But a lot of other things happen. Sickness has come. Problems come. Uh, and we are helpless. We need to walk holy with the Lord so that we can enjoy and live the victorious life that God has made uh, made it possible for us. If you want to enjoy and be successful in life, you need to walk holy with the Lord.